time our fighting forces go into action, they depend upon the skill of the workers of Britain to equip our fighting men on land, at sea, and in the air, the labor and the skill of many different trades are enlisted. An army without uniform. In Britain now, by day and by night, in all the workshops of war, that huge army without uniform is on active service. They win their victories by making machines to beat those of the enemy in output and efficiency. On this battlefront, there is a constant offensive. Modern warfare demands vast quantities of steel. Here are the steel workers. They have lived close to the furnace all their lives and know the ways of molten metal. In peacetime, they made steel for engineering and architectural triumphs the world over. But now, Britain is at war. bombs and battleships, down to nails and needles, within these glowing fires are all the implements of war still liquid and as yet invisible. under the blows of the forge, the Bren begins to take shape out of the rough ingot. The men who manipulate the forges are highly skilled. Every blow is nicely calculated. In the machine shops, other men are taking the parts as they come roughly shaped from the forge and finishing them to a micrometer degree of exactness. Upon the smoothness and certainty with which all the many parts of this Bren gun work together, may depend a trench captured or a position held. The Bren is a comparatively new invention, but the men who make it have years of engineering experience behind them. Their eyes, trained to look down gun barrels and reject them for the slightest flaw, are as keen as the eyes of the soldiers who will later look along the sights. And here are men whose hands have been trained in peacetime in the assembly of complicated machinery. Seen separately, the parts they're bringing together look as though they might belong to an inoffensive sewing machine. But the final result is the most formidable of all small arms, the Bren gun. These men, whose grandfathers made rifles, combine the old craftsmanship with the new science. They hold victory in their hands. And when each gun is tried, as every gun is before going into service, it finds the mark with all the accuracy of a piece of British precision engineering. Behind our guns, there are workers as well as soldiers. In other workshops, big guns tell the same story on a grand scale. This is no less a work of precision, although the ingot from which a big gun is forged may weigh a uh, hundred tons. This great mass of white hot metal brought to an exact temperature within precise limits of time marks the beginning of yet another victorious assault by the army without uniform. This is 
the home of giant machinery, of huge presses and enormous lathes, controlled by men to whom their size means nothing more than the fact that they are the best tools for doing the job. are men who, father and son, have tested big guns for generations. They fire a charge through the gun six times more powerful than that for which it was built. But while some workers fashion the gun to a fine degree of precision, other men must match it with the precision of the missile it is to fire. The shell must be perfect. British light engineering resources, speedily adapted on the outbreak of war, are feeding the guns with constant supplies of shells and bullets. Although vast quantities of shells are being turned out every day, the ammunition factories must always hold themselves ready to switch over from one type of shell to another, should the need arise. The resources of skilled men and up-to-date machines must be ready to meet any demand that war may suddenly hurl at them. Women too take their place in the ranks of this army without uniform. There are places in the ranks where their special ability for certain work gives them the right to serve. The quick and accurate fingers of these girls are as important to the fight as the vital supplies they are maintaining. Industry takes nothing for granted in her war effort. Armour plating has actually to resist its first bullet before it is passed for use. Specially toned, this armour plate protects the tanks, modern fighting fortresses that carry the battle into the enemy's lines at incredible speed. Britain is at war, the skilled army of workers from Britain's motor industries is playing a big part. 
men whose job was making good motor cars for the business and pleasures of peace, have now mobilized all their resources of technique and machinery. They make possible the greatest effort in mobile warfare the world has ever known. supremacy is won not only in battle, but months before during trials. For these hazardous jobs, the army without uniform has no shortage of picked men. victories are won not only with bombs and bullets, but also with set squares, slide rules, and all the weapons of the mathematician. In the aircraft factories of Britain, our workmen are trained to build to the most severe standards of accuracy in the world. When we read that all our aircraft return safely, we can sometimes hardly imagine how they manage to withstand the hail of bullets and the strains of maneuvering to which they have been subjected. Here is the answer. In airframes, in which the position of every strengthening member is worked out mathematically, in wings and fuselage, strengthened over and over again with cross bracings, in work carefully carried out by none but the most competent craftsmen, in assembly that is content with no superficial result, but insists on the best possible job. Our speed up in production is a big achievement, but it has not been attained by scamping the work, nor is there any stinting of quality where the lives of our airmen are at stake. This is the attack of the craftsman rather than the machine. This is the front, where skilled hands assemble part by part the machines which are to give us superiority in the air. So when each aeroplane is assembled, wings and fuselage joined, engine rigged, petrol tanks fitted, tail assembled, air screw lifted into place, every part has been tested and retested until human ingenuity can do no more. And even then, before the aircraft is passed out, it is submitted by experts to every conceivable test, both on the ground and in the air. A large section of the army without uniform is building ships. In shipyards all over the country, new ships lie on the stocks side by side. In building new ships to bring home our food and supplies, industry is called on every branch of our mobilized manpower. From all the hundreds of trades that go to the making of a ship. And in an emergency, she has her reserves ready and calls upon skilled tradesmen at a moment's notice.
which sail on in convoy, protected by the guns of the Royal Navy, carrying exports abroad, bringing home raw materials, food, and all the other essential commodities of war that come from overseas. mobilized her skilled men and woman power and every effort of their skill is directed to one end victory an army without uniform is standing behind the guns 